everyone welcome back to my channel I hope you are all doing really well so today I'm going to show you how to get your Cricut to write on envelopes just like this this one is one that I have just made I'm going to show you how to do this in today's video um, I'm going to show you how to also write onto a pre-made envelope using your Cricut this is a lovely way of personalizing your envelopes and also just making sure that they look amazing when they're written I know sometimes I rush writing envelopes and this just makes it so much more neat so without any further ado let's get started there are a couple of different ways that you can get your Cricut to write on envelopes for you so you can either write on a ready-made envelope and you know me I love a ready-made envelope or you can actually make an envelope within a project so if for instance we were going to do that if we went into projects and just clicked on that and one of the projects that I know has an envelope in it is the pop-up cards so if I just type in pop-up and then just pick any of the cards let's pick the cupcake I've made this particular card very recently on the channel so if you haven't seen that I'll pop a link to that above for you now and down below in the description so when you get the card project up on the screen, it's going to give you an envelope template that you can use if you want to. So let's just shrink this down. There is the envelope piece in question. There we go. So that is the piece we want. Let's move that over to one side and just get rid of all these other bits for now because we don't need those today. So this is our envelope piece and obviously this envelope is going to match the size of the card that we're making and at the moment it is on an angle so when we're writing on the card we need to turn our envelope template around so you've either got this little handle here that if you hover past this box handle here which does the sizing out a little bit it will turn into this bendy arrow here and you can either use that to just turn your envelope around so the other way to do it is to just click on it and select everything and then come up to this rotate box at the top and just put in the number of degrees that you wish to rotate it so that is done now what I'm going to do now is get my address written onto this envelope so if I come over to text and just choose text and I can start writing my address and my name so if I put Maximus the dog 147 Bark Lane Dogville and then I'm going to put UK so there we go that is Maximus oh why have I put Maximus to dog let's change that Maximus the dog there we go okay that is right so now what we need to do is make this into the size that we need it to be for the envelope and also we want to make it into a writing font so first things first let's change the size I'm going to just pop that straight down to 36 because I think that will be a pretty good size for the envelope and it looks all right doesn't it let's now come up the top here and just take a quick look at the operation type so the operation at the moment is set as a basic cut so if we were to send this to the, the machine right now on a mat, it's going to cut all this out, it's going to score these lines, and then it's going to actually cut those letters out of the envelope. And of course, that is not what we want it to do. So we want it to write on the envelope. So if we click on the drop down box here, and then if we just go here and choose pen, that is now going to write on that envelope for us. Maximus the dog 147 Bark Lane. However, you can see that it is like a bubble writing sort of thing at the moment, and we don't want that either, do we? So let's go up to our fonts and we want to change our fonts now. So you've got three options here you've either got the Cricut fonts, your system fonts, or you've got bookmarks. If you've saved any fonts previously, they will appear here as your bookmarks. So we need to choose a writing font. I'm going to go back to Cricut and just click on that. And then I'm going to come over here to these filters and I'm going to click there. Now this gives us lots of different options that we can choose to break down 
the fonts that are displayed to us in the drop down menu. So I'm going to go down here and choose writing and just tick that box. And these are all the different writing fonts that you can use. I like this Alyssa stencil script. It's a really nice one. Um, but I can see there are quite a few others. The seashell one is nice, but that does come out as a bubble writing as well. We want one that's going to be quite thin. You can also download writing fonts. However, they are quite expensive unless you're using one from like Defont or somewhere like that. Let's choose Lemonade and see what that's like. Let's wait for that to change. There we go. That's perfect for a dog, I reckon. Now I'm just going to zoom back out a little bit because it still doesn't look quite straight, which leads me to think that that wasn't quite straight when it was first on there. All right, so now that we've changed our font, it looks pretty good, but it has changed it back to being a basic cut. So we need to go up the top here again and just change that back to our pen. Let's just have a quick look and see whether that is really bubbly still. Nope, that looks pretty good. What we want to do now is just select everything and we want to click on attach. And now we have basically stuck our writing section onto those other two layers. So if we go through to make it now, when it comes up, it's going to show us all of the functions that the Quicket's going to perform on the left here. So we've got score, pen and basic cut, which is exactly what we're expecting. I'm going to do this onto an A4 sheet. So if you want to, you can change the material size. And then if you click on to continue, it's going to find my machine. I'm going to use a medium card stock, so let's click on that. I don't think I need any more pressure. Um, so now it's going to tell me what I need to put into my machine. So I need to put in the pen, I need to load my scoring wheel, and I need to put the mat in. So let's jump over to the desk and get all of those things done now. All right then, so I've got my piece of card here. So I'm just using a pale green piece of card. I'm just going to pop that up in the left hand corner of my mat. I'm just going to get my bray up and give that a little press down. So that is nicely adhered to my mat. Now the pen that I'm using today is this Zebra Doodlers Glitter Pen. I bought these the other day from the works. They're £1.50 for three and they fit into the Cricut Clamp A without any adapters or anything like that being needed and they, the writing quality with these is really really good i do have the similar sort of thing in the cricut pens now these are 10 pounds for six and these don't work as well i don't feel as what these do this is a drawing that i did the other day with these new pens and the quality of the writing and how smooth it looks and the continuity of the pen on the paper is absolutely amazing. So if you want to do drawing and writing with your Cricut, I would definitely recommend grab some of these from the works. They are super duper cheap. The pack I bought had gold, silver and this black one in it. And I think they are absolutely amazing. I will pop a link down below to them if I can find them in their store so what you're going to need as well now is your scoring stylus or your scoring wheel i'm going to use a scoring wheel today purely because if i put the scoring stylus into clamp a i'm going to then need to take it back out in order to put my pen in and i want to get all that set up straight away now let's jump over to the machine and set the machine up ready to do our drawing the first thing then that we want to do is get our pen into clamp A and as you can see here I haven't got anything in there at the moment so if we just open the clamp up I'm just going to take the lid off my pen and pop it onto the top here's my pen and all I'm going to do is just pop it into this clamp push it in a little bit but don't force it and then just close that clamp up because on the computer screen it's telling me that it's going to do the scoring first before it does anything else I'm going to open clamp B just take out my fine point blade there and I'm just going to pop in my scoring wheel and I'm using 01 tip today. Pop that into there and close that up. Now we can just insert our mat. So the mat just goes into the machine like so 
and you can see on the panel here that the flashing insert mat button is already on if we press that we're going to take the mat into the machine the carriage just does a little reset and then we're ready to hit the flashing C button when I do this what's going to happen with the machine is it's going to pull this carriage all the way over to this side and it's just looking for the tools and making sure that it's got what it needs in the machines so that it's ready to do everything it needs to let's hit that button now Once all the drawing is complete it's going to come up on the screen like this with a prompt for you to change the scoring wheel out for the fine point blade so as you can see on here now that is telling me to pop that fine point into clamp B and then just hit the go button again so that's what I'm going to do now so you can see the drawing is finished let's open clamp B just take out that scoring wheel and its housing then we've got our fine point blade here that we can just pop back into clamp B the cricket button is flashing again so we can just press that and it's going to now cut the envelope again it's just checking for that tool and making sure we've got the right thing in place Completed. Let's eject the mat just by pressing the button again. Here we are then back on the desk and the completed project is here. If you just flip the mat over and just bend that back, our envelope will come off of the mat pretty easily. Now all we need to do is just bend across our score lines just to make our envelope. And you can glue this together or tape it together however you want to. There's our perfectly written envelope ready to send off to Maximus the dog. So I'm just back on the canvas then and I can hide this whole envelope just by clicking on this little eye icon here. That's gone now so we can start again. So let's have a quick look at the other way that we can do this. Let's go over here grab a shape. And we want the shape to be the same size and shape as our pre-cut envelope. So here's the square. My envelope is roughly 11 centimetres by 16. So what I'm going to do is come up to the top here and I'm going to unlock this padlock. And then I'm going to change my width here to 16. And then my height is going to be 11. So that now is representative of my envelope. Let me make it a bit bigger just by zooming in. I am going to change the colour of my envelope to be white and that is just so that I can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. Now I'm going to grab my text again. So at the moment it's going to be in the same font as we used for the Maximus one. So let's do this one to Dotty the dog because she'll feel left out if she hasn't got her own envelope, won't she? And she lives at 152 Bark Lane. And that is also in Dogville, the UK. So again, the writing has come out huge. <laughs> Let's change that down to 36 again, because that's a good size font. Okay, there we go. So we can pop that onto there. I am going to do a different font for Dotty though, and I'm going to show you what a bubble font will come out like. So if we go up to the fonts again, it is still on the writing that we want to be looking. So let's click down there into writing. So um, the Alyssa Stencil Script one is quite nice. I'll show you that first. This is one of my favorites and it's a lovely cursive font for if you want to make something nice. So it does come out as a little bit of a bubble font, as you can see. But if you're using a quite quite a thick pen, like the ones that I'm using, it will fill in this, so it won't be overly obvious that it is a bubble font. Um, 
Another one that I saw yesterday that I quite liked was... Uh, which one was it? Oh, the horror show. This is a Halloween-y one, so this is quite fun, especially for this time of year. If you've got envelopes um, with invitations, for instance, this would be a good one. Let's use this one. What I'm going to do then is just double check that my operation type is still on pen, just by checking at the top here, and it is in this instance. So now what I'm going to do is just click on the square. I'm happy with the sizing of that for now. Let's just hide the square. And what we want to do is go over to the desk again and get our mat set up. So we'll do that now. Okay, so here's my mat again. These are the envelopes I'm going to be using. They're just craft style, six by four, um, 11 centimeters by 16 centimeters sized envelopes. You can buy these in packs of 25. I get them from my wholesaler. Um, this is the one I'm gonna use, this little purple one. So what I want to do first of all is turn my mat around so that when I go through to make it on the screen, the measurements that are showing on the left hand side and the top of the mat on the screen are the same as what I'm looking at here. You want to get your envelope and make sure you get it the right way around and just pop it in that top corner there of your mat. Give it a good press down with your hands and if you've got a brayer definitely use that as well because you want it to be really well stuck onto your mat. Back on the canvas then, if we go through to make it We're going to get a single mat come up on the screen and it's going to just have the pen function as what it wants to carry out when it eventually comes up. It's been a bit slow. All right, so that's come up there now and it is just showing us one function that it's going to perform, which is the drawing with the pen. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Because we've got our envelope placed right up in the top corner of the mat there, what we want to do is make sure that this is going to draw in the appropriate place. So if we look, um, so here is where the bottom of our writing is gonna be, which is about the 11 centimeter mark. Let's just move that up a touch. And then we want to try and get it in the center. So if we say about eight centimeters or so, so about there, and you just want to drag your design over to where it's going to be. So if we were looking at this now with the um, rectangle that we'd used as our template, it would be around that sort of area. If we click on continue, we do still need to choose a base material, even though we're not actually cutting. And this is really more to do with the amount of pressure that the Cricut applies when it's writing with the pen. So I am going to just choose a medium cardstock again. And now that is ready to do the drawing onto our envelope. So I'm just going to flip over to the machine and show you what's going to happen next. So the pen is still in the machine from the envelope that we did for Max the dog. So we don't need to put a pen in. But if you want to change the colour you can. Just open your clamp, pull the pen out and just pop a different one in. We don't need to have a blade in and we also don't need the scoring wheel or scoring stylus in this instance. All we need is our pen. So let's get our mat now and we're just going to pop the mat in like we did before and just hit the insert mat button and that should be ready to go so let's hit the go button Cricut it doesn't need to look for any tools this time because it knows that we're just going to be using the pen and now it's going to start doing its draw there we go then, that has now written our envelope. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm just gonna flip my mat over and get that off there. Now we can pop a letter in there to Dottie, inviting her to our awesome Halloween party that we're gonna have this year. So there you go, that's two amazing ways that you can get your Cricut to do all the hard work of writing envelopes neatly for you. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, I would love to see you again. So don't forget to subscribe, drop me any questions or comments that you might have down below. And don't forget to like this video as well. And I hope you have a fabulous week. I'll see you really soon for another another video. Bye!